Hi, I'm Matt from PC Games N, reporting to you from Gamescom 2016 in Germany. And I'm here with Philip, who's lead game director on Dawn of War 3. Hi Hello. there. Hi. In front of some beautiful sort of miniatures here, yes. of which I want to point out to what might not be in frame, is an Imperial Knight indeed, over here. Indeed, indeed. And uh, as many people may know, that is one of the big cool units that we're talking about in Dawn of War 3. Yes. So would you like to explain what her big sort of duties on the battlefield are? Oh, sure. So Solaria, our uh, sort of campaign hero Imperial mm -hmm. Knight, who's in, in this mission and um, has been in a lot of our, our press coverage, mm -hmm. is just my favorite unit in the entire game. She's this giant 14 meter tall, mech with gatling guns for arms and a giant missile pod on her back and she is sort of the peak unit yeah. for the space marines mm -hmm. now for the deep lore fans out there she's not technically a space marine she's <laughs> an ally of right. the blood ravens uh, but she serves the role of the late game powerhouse uh, she delivers unparalleled ranged firepower um, has a lot of health but she does need to be supported mm -hmm. which is sort of a a good example of how we're using these heroes. Um, she's vulnerable to uh, melee combat, mm -hmm. not because of some sort of weird hidden penalty, but because her weapons just have yeah. minimum range. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have a lot of tools to deal with it. So it's really best to deploy her mm -hmm. with a group yep. of supporting you. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, you say that she's vulnerable, and uh, having played it, I did notice that I eventually lost her. Yeah. And there is a, there's a massive kind of a respawn timer on her, isn't indeed, there? Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. There's about a five-minute respawn on yeah. her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, uh, I assume other heroes in that sort of uh, idea will have similar sort of cooldowns? Yes, mm -hmm. indeed, indeed. Yeah. Heroes come, come out in a sort of paced way mm -hmm. using a resource. Uh, once you've spent that resource to summon them, you have them for the rest of the yeah. match. But if they die, they do take a while to mm -hmm. respawn. Yeah. So it's sort of a moment you need to pull mm -hmm. back and uh, regroup. Yep. And if you could explain sort of like when these characters come into the campaign, is this because of like narrative reasons or is it because of sort of like achievements that you do throughout the campaign? Uh, so there's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. In the campaign, you will always start with the, the principal hero yep. for that faction, so for the Space Marines that's Gabriel Angelos, yep. um, and there are missions that will highlight other heroes and sort of give them to you in staged introductions, but you'll also be unlocking further heroes in a sort of progression scheme. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously Dawn of War 3, again, a very different game from Dawn of War 1 and 2. Yes. Uh, mixes the kind of base and the, uh, the, the squad strategy. Um, also not quite as zoomed in, I noticed, as maybe Dawn of War 2 or 1. Is there a reason why sort of you've gone for maybe a more traditional RTS? Well, we really wanted to get big army gameplay, mm. right? The, the, where Dawn of War 3 sings is when you have these powerful heroes mm -hmm. who form the hard core of a large army that's, you yeah. know, marching across mm -hmm. the battlefield. And to control a large army, you want a camera that's out yeah. a little more. So that's really where that decision mm -hmm. came from. And uh, in terms of your campaign, um, are you planning on having sort of like small short sections of campaign like we saw in um, some of the Dawn of War um, expansion packs? Or are you looking at a focus on sort of like the Blood Ravens again? Uh, so one of the big things I wanted to mm -hmm. do with Dawn of War 3 was give equal attention to all the playable mm -hmm. races. Uh, we did that in the previous versions eventually through mm -hmm. the expansions, but we're never able to do it yeah. in the lead game. I wanted to change that. So our campaign alternates points of view. You'll sort of play mission one as Space Marines, mission two as Orcs, mission three as Eldar, and then back to Space right. Marines. And that allows us to do all kinds of interesting narrative things where the player knows yeah. more than any of the protagonists and you're sort of setting up the next mission with each mission. Uh, but it also means by the time you've finished the campaign, you've played all the races equally, you've learned how they play, you're better set up for multiplayer, and you're not in that situation where it's like, well, it's sort of all about space marines and the other guys are just the punching bags. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you say about punching bags, Eldar are typically known for being sort of like weak tinfoil armor kind of guys. They didn't quite seem like that <laughs> in this. Uh, we've seen the Eldar for the first time today. Would you like to explain a little bit what's cool about those guys? Yeah, so the, the Eldar are not at all pushovers. <laughs> Um, they do typically have less health than Space Marines, but they're much faster um, and they can be very efficient in their roles. 
One of the big mechanics with them is they have what we call battle focus, right. which is sort of a warrior trance they go okay. into. Um, what it translates to on, in gameplay is sort of a, a regenerative shield of health. Mm -hmm. So unlike Space Marines, who as the squad takes damage, their firepower will go down, um, the Eldar can take a bunch of damage without their firepower going mm -hmm. down. Now, if you get through that shield, they don't have much health, actual health behind right. it, so mm -hmm. you can start cutting them apart pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, so it makes them challenging to fight as a Space Marine, and it makes them really interesting to play. Mm -hmm. you, um, you get to really use hit and run tactics. Mm -hmm. And I assume, uh, depending on what uh, race you are fighting, will depend on very much on sort of like where your tactics come into play. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. A key thing about Dawn of War is that each of the factions are different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They really they bring different tools, different strategies, different big mechanics. Mm -hmm. Uh, to play, you know, drop pods are yep. completely unique to the Space Marines. There isn't an equivalent of drop pods yeah. it, with the other races. There's other really different things. Now there are some, you know, basics like everybody will have a base ranged unit and a base melee unit, and you know, so, so there's some. You don't have to reinvent everything, yep. but there's a lot of special character. Mm -hmm. in yeah. Right, that's everything from the Dawn of War section here at Gamescom 2016. If you like the video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.